We learned last week about the language that computers speak or understand, which is binary. Uh, and this week, as we dive into learning more of the Python programming language, it'll help us to understand how computers remember things and how their memory works. So why does memory matter? Well, you'll be surprised to, to know, maybe, if you haven't thought about it before, that to solve problems, even smaller problems, we often need to not only be able to think through the problem, but also be able to jot things down and remember and reference them later. And so as an example, I have a simple math problem here on the screen, and I want you to take 15, 20 seconds uh, and solve it in your mind. Just think through how you would solve this and see if you can come up with an answer. OK, hopefully you have an answer. Um, I'll talk about how I would go uh, about doing this problem. I kind of broke this down into smaller pieces. So for me, adding four numbers together at once is kind of a lot. Uh, I don't think I can do that all at once in my head. So instead, I'm going to add two numbers at a time, and that's something I can do. And 12 plus 10 gives us 22. And 15 plus 19 gives us 34. And now, I just have two numbers to add together again, 22 and 34. And if I add those together, I get 56. Now, that's not the only way to do this problem. You might have approached it a little bit differently. Maybe you saw that there's four tens here. So 10, 10, 10, and 10. You add those together, you get 40. And then if you also add together the ones place, so 2 plus 0 plus 5 plus 9, you get 16. And then you can add together 40 and 16, and you get 56. But either way, even for a not all that complicated problem in the grand scheme of things, you still need some sort of intermediate um, memory or scratch paper to be able to solve a problem, to break it down into smaller pieces to make it more tractable. So here, the intermediate pieces were this 12 plus 10, which is 22. And I had to store that away in my memory while I go solve 15 plus 19 to then be able to come back and add 22 and 34 to get 56. And computers are problem-solving machines, and what we're really expressing in our Python, what we're going to be writing, is we're going to be solving problems. Um, and expressing problems and solving them and trying to get to a solution using Python. And so Python is no different. Uh, computers uh, have the same kind of memory that we have in our minds, some sort of scratch paper. And you can think about this memory kind of like a notebook, in the same way that maybe you have a notebook in which you would um, kind of write out scratch work as you're solving a problem. Except I'll just point out that technically in the computer, the computer is thinking in binary, so it's writing everything in the notebook in binary too. And so here I have all zeros on my notebook page just to represent kind of a blank page and uh, a blank page of, of memory uh, for the, the computer. To make sure we just keep using the same language uh, for this class, and actually in your future CS classes, we'll just start it now, uh, we're going to call a page in this notebook a frame. So this thing on the right, which is the computer's kind of scratch paper and memory, um, is called a frame. Now, what we just talked about is what the computer has available for its memory. Now we're going to talk about, as programmers in Python, how we can use that memory to help us solve problems and break down problems to smaller pieces. So in Python, this is called uh, variables. You should be familiar with the concept of variables from your uh, algebra classes. So if you see something like this, a equals 5, b equals 6, c equals a plus b, what is the value of c? You should be able to quickly tell me that the value of c is 11. And how did you know? Well, you added 5 and 6 together. Of course, you got 11. But think about this a little more. How did you know to add 5 and 6 together? Because what the page actually says is a plus b. So how did you know what to do? Well, you're already just intrinsically familiar with the idea of a variable and how a 
actually represents the value 5, and b actually represents the value 6. And so when you see some statement like c equals a plus b, you know that that actually means uh, not the letters a plus the letter b, means the variable a, which has a value of 5, and the variable b, which has a value of 6. And so you replace a with 5, b with 6, you add them together, and now c is a new variable that has the value 11. By the way, have you thought about where the name variable comes from and why we call them variables? Well, we can split it up into its kind of root and tail here, variable, um, which comes from the word very, like different, um, or differing. Uh, oops. And this really means that a variable is something that is able to vary. And so that makes sense. Like a equals 5, uh, we can also set a to be 10, or a to be 50, or a to be 1,000. Um, a is the variable, and its actual value can vary. It's able to vary. Python has the same, same exact concept that you're already familiar with in algebra. To really put it formally, a variable is a storage location that's filled with a value and associated with an identifier. In particular, a storage location on that frame that we saw earlier, kind of a scratch paper. And so when you have something like num apples equals 5, and you use Python 3 and then the name of your file, that compiles your code into machine code and it gets run, what the computer actually does is, uh, in memory, it takes the first available spot, or whatever spot it wants to take, writes down the value. So here you can see we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 5 in binary. And then it names that value, that place in memory, num apples. And so num apples equals 5 is actually taking the number 5 and putting it in memory and naming that location in memory num apples so that we can get back to it or refer to it later. Um, but for like ease of reading for and just thinking about all this, let's not think about it in terms of uh, binary, the ones and zeros. Let's instead write the frame and what it looks like using human letters and numbers. Um, and kind of a nice way to look at it is like this. This is what we'll be using in this class and in the slides is we'll, we'll write the frame. We'll just call it the global frame, the frame, same thing, it's the frame. Um, and we'll call it num, uh, uh, and we'll write down the name of the variable, and then next to that, the actual value that's stored in that variable. So num apples equals 5. So to go back to my previous slide, but with this easier to understand and easier to kind of um, keep track of an update, clearer a view of a frame, when this num apples equals 5 code gets compiled and then run, uh, our frame looks like this. Num apples with a value of 5 stored for that variable. So two concepts that I want you to be able to use and understand the word words for are assigning a variable and referencing a variable. So assigning a variable means storing a value in memory with some given name. And so uh, when uh, we can see the examples here, like x equals 7. So the variable name, you also sometimes call it an identifier. So the name of the variable is the same thing as an identifier, is x. And 7 is the value that we're going to store in memory, and we're going to name that location x. It's the identifier. y is equal to x plus 2. So x plus 2, so 7 plus 2 is we get y. Um, or name equals Alex. And so when this code gets run, we can see what the frame will look like. A computer has in the frame um, x, the variable x with a value of 7, the variable y with a, var a value of 9, or the variable name with a value of Alex. Uh, and in variable assignment, you can tell what's being assigned to and what the value is based on what side of the equal sign um, it's on. So on the left side, we always have the variable name that's being assigned to. And on the right side, we always have the value that's being assigned to that variable. Um, so if we can go over to our IDE here, 
that you might still have pulled up. We have a scratch file. Um, I'm going to get rid of this uh, hello. Well, first we can just run this to make sure um, scratch.py, we can run it. Python 3 scratch.py. Yeah, we see that hello world gets printed. So I'm going to get rid of the print and let's try uh, creating and assigning a variable. So something like x equals 5. So if we save this and we run it, we go back here. Remember the shortcut. Uh, you can press the up arrow on your keyboard when you're in the terminal to go back to the previous command that you've just run. And so then you don't have to keep typing Python 3 in the name of your file over and over. So we ran this code and nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Well, it's kind of misleading to say that nothing happened. Nothing got printed to the screen, but um, Python uh, and the computer, when this code got ran, did put x with a value of 5 into its memory, but we never used the value of x for anything. And so we didn't see anything get printed. So let's talk about how we would do that. Now, this is the other big word that I wanted you to know, which is, uh, which is called referencing. So reference, or referencing a variable, is how you read the name for, for reading the value back from memory to use it for something. So if we have a line of code like x equals 7 and then print x, um, that x there, when the computer sees x in the code, it'll go and it'll pull the value of x from memory. And so let's try that. If we go back to Mimir, write print x, and I'll save the file. If I go back and I run our code, you should see that whatever value for x that you set will get printed. And let's just make sure that this is actually a variable. So if I set a different value like 12, and then I run this code again, well, you'll see that 12 will get printed because x is a variable. And this time, we set the value of x to be 12. So in the frame, the name x and a value of 12 gets recorded. And then when we go and we try to reference x, uh, we pull out the value 12. Now, uh, here's a question for you. What about uh, this? What will line 5 print? So now I have print, and then I give it in quotation marks x. Let's see. If I run this code, well, if I run this code, when I have print x without quotation marks, 12 gets printed. But print x with quotation marks, um, the actual letter x gets printed. And that's because uh, anything in Python that's inside of quotation marks means that Python will want to take it literally, so actually the letter x. If you want to use the variable and have uh, Python uh, have the computer reference uh, the variable and go get its value, then you uh, don't put quotation on, uh, quotation marks. So quotation marks tell Python this is something literal. Uh, in fact, it's a type, it's a string, which is something we're going to learn about next class. But for referencing variables, you don't use uh, quotation marks.